Thank you. Right, uh, good afternoon everybody. My name is Mike Albert and uh, my company is Mike Larata Copywriting for Startups. Um, before I, uh, I get on with uh, talking about how to write well, oh, there I am. <laughs> um, I thought I'd just tell you a quick story about how I got here. It was um, about seven years ago. My background is actually working in sales, working in advertising sales. I, uh, I worked at Clear Channel, one of the biggest um, outdoor advertising companies in the world. I worked at Global Radio, um, the owners are of Heart and Capital, some of the biggest radio stations in the country. And um, I was actually working at Saga Magazine, one of the um, biggest magazines in the country in their advertising sales team. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Saga Magazine, I'm sure you're all too young, but it's a, uh, it's a magazine aimed at older people. And, um, we were about to go to press uh, with an issue the next, in the next couple of days and we were missing a page and it was supposed to be an, an, an advertorial um, which is a, it's like an article but it's, also, it's actually a paid for advert so it looks like an article in the magazine. Anyway, we were missing this advertorial and there were none of the journalists were around to write it and uh, we thought, well, what are we going to do? And, um, my boss, he, he grabs me and goes, Mike, you're, you're the smart aleck around the office who, uh, who uh, thinks they know how to spell better or thinks they know how to do all the grammar and full stops better than anyone else. Why don't you have a go at writing it? So, well, I, I, didn't, I didn't really have much choice in the matter. So, uh, so I, uh, I wrote the editorial. It was for the British Egg Council. I remember it like it was yesterday. And I, uh, I wrote this article for the British Egg Council and they loved it. The, uh, the editor was happy. Everyone was happy with it. It looked absolutely awesome when it was in the magazine, when it was all done up by the graphic designer and stuff. And um, I was hooked from there, really. And so um, I started to carve out a bit of a role for myself as the uh, advertising writer at Southern Magazine. And I uh, got to work with some of the uh, biggest names in the UK, such as Boots and British Gas. And then last year, unfortunately, I got made redundant. Oh. But, um, I, and I decided, rather than go back uh, and get a proper job, I'll, uh, I'll see if I can make a go of it myself. And so here I am really, um, I've kind of found a niche as a copywriter for startups. Um, I work with some great software companies, some great apps, and also some great small businesses. Um, doing web advertising, doing uh, a lot of articles, which I'll talk to you a lot about now, and also some advertising campaigns. So yeah, that's really uh, how I got here today. And now I'm gonna share with you a few tips. So when uh, Rajiv asked me about speaking about the art of copywriting, I would've wanted him to, wanted to put him straight there and then really. But seeing as I've never spoken in public before like this, yeah, this is the launch of my public speaking career. <laughs> I kept quiet, but I can't keep quiet any longer. This is, uh, this is what led me to say yes to, uh, to Rajiv's uh, Rajiv offer. Copywriting, or at least um, the style of copywriting that I do, isn't really an art. Um, to be honest, I'm not really interested in the art, and I guess you guys aren't really either. You want something that's effective, you want something that works, and something that is flowery and arty isn't probably going to connect with your audience in the way that something that is really direct is. And so that's the kind of style that I take. When you actually approach it in that way, look scientifically, looking for something that's effect effective, actually anyone can do it. You can do it too, and I'm going to show you how. As I'm going to explain, producing regular fresh content for your business's website can help you in so many ways. So what's holding you back? Here are some of the remarks that I hear when I talk to businesses about writing. Uh, there we go. The fear of a blank page. I don't have good vocabulary. I can't spell. Why would anyone want to read anything that I write? There we go. Or perhaps you've decided to sit down and write something, but be struck down by the fear of the blank page. I'm going to share with you my system that makes it easy to let those words flow right out of you. So, copywriting can take many forms. To run a successful business, you may need sales letters, landing pages, adverts, brochures, annual reports. Someone is writing those, so why not you? But for the purposes of this talk, I want to talk about articles. They're booming right now, and for good reason. You might call them blogs, but um, I'm going to stick with articles for now. Sounds a bit more serious. 
They're around 500 to 800 words long, although you're welcome to write more if you like. I'm talking about a structure that is easy for your reader to follow and easily replicable for any subject. Here's a simple structure for an article. Five paragraphs and after a headline that grabs your audience and draws them right in. Firstly, your introduction. Set the scene, draw your reader's attention to a particular question that you're going to answer, a problem that you're going to solve. Preview the points that you're going to be making. Draw the reader in for the rest of the article. Then paragraph two, your main point. Explain the most important point that you want to make. If you post a question in the headline, answer it. We don't want your reader to stop reading here. But if they did, send them away remembering one thing. Point number two. This is where you can make some additional points to back up the assertion that you made earlier in the previous paragraph. Or alternatively, you can dig deeper into the point that you made, using statistics, quotes, or other pieces of evidence. Next paragraph is a bit more of a free choice. Choose between adding more additional points to back up the assertion that you made already. Alternatively, and I like to do this, I present a counter-argument. Explain why everything I've said before might be totally wrong and something else may be right. Another option is to relate everything back to your business. If you've been making far-reaching statements before, narrow it back down to what matters to you and to your reader. Finally, the conclusion. This is where you tie the article up. Sum up what you've written before and tell your reader what problem you've solved. And end the article, and this is very important, with a call to action. Ask your reader to do something, anything. Ask them to leave a comment, ask them to read another article. And if you're feeling really bold, ask them to buy something. Okay, I'm going to take a little departure from showing you how to write an article now and tell you why articles are good. Like that. If you're in business, you need to know the numerous benefits of producing regular, fresh, consistent articles for your website. Firstly, Google. Keeping your site updated with fresh content tells Google that your site is a living, breathing, going concern. While keywords aren't as important as they used to be, and keyword stuffing is a Google crime, Fresh articles give you an opportunity to add more keywords to your site. <coughs> Fresh articles also get more visitors, social shares and backlinks. And all these things help your site rise up the Google rankings as Google strive to give their customers the best possible search experience. Secondly, authority. New articles on your site gives you, you an opportunity to position yourself as an authority figure in your industry. I hate the term thought leader, but I'm going to use it anyway. If your articles explain developments in your industry, it shows your audience that you've got your finger on the pulse. If your article is good, it will be shared around on social media. It will grow your audience exponentially, boosting your brand. And finally, articles are an opportunity to solve a problem for your audience. And if you can do that for your audience, they'll think you're great. And uh, lastly, sales. Most importantly for your business, articles help you sell. Fresh content brings visitors to your site, and while you're there, they might buy something. And you can use articles to create desire for your product or service. You can use articles to move leads through your business funnel, sign them up to a newsletter, for example, and use your calls to action to drive your business. All right, now uh, back to writing. You could just sit down in front of a blank screen and start writing, but it probably won't be very good. You need to make a detailed plan of what you're going to write. Actually, however, before you even start doing that, Figure out what you're looking to achieve from this piece of writing, your goals. Okay, firstly, who? who? Work out who you're writing for. And I'm going to give you a clue, you're not writing for yourself. You're writing, if you're writing for your customer, you should already have a good picture of who that is. However, you might be writing for a prospect or maybe an influencer. Work out how, who you want to read your article and keep them in your mind throughout the writing process. Secondly, what? What are you writing about? This is where you want to get as narrow as you can. You can't write 800 words about your entire industry and expect it to cover much, so don't do that. Pinpoint something. You need to come up with a headline. You don't need to come up with a headline or an angle just yet, just a subject. And lastly, why? What are you looking to achieve with this piece of writing? Are you looking to solve a reader's problem, show them how to do something? Or maybe you want to sell a product or service? Figure out your why, and you'll soon know whether you've achieved your goals or not. Okay, once you've decided what you want to write about, it's time to do some research. Even if you're writing about something you already know a lot about, I'd still advise doing a bit of research. You don't want to forget anything. 
I would advise that reading a minimum of three other articles around your subject. Don't just choose the first three that come up in Google, because they're all likely to be the same. Dig a little deeper. Possibly read the perspective of someone you wouldn't normally read. You'd be surprised at what you can discover. And after that, you need to find an angle. After reading around your subject, you should be armed with enough information to come up with an angle for your article. Try and make it different from the pieces you've already read elsewhere. You don't have to follow the crowd. Remember, only write about one subject at a time. People really only search for and want to read uh, one subject at a time. Plus, it saves you subjects to write about later. You don't need to generalise. OK, uh, next I'm going to talk about headlines. Decide on a headline for your piece of writing. It's, it's really important, because if they see it on a web page, that's all there is to, to tempt your reader to click on that web page and read your article. So here are some tips on how to write a great headline. Well, firstly, be accurate. I'm sure you've all seen it. Nothing is more annoying than clicking on an article that you've seen on a website, only to find out that the article in it doesn't really answer your question, doesn't really match the headline, doesn't give you what you're looking for. Um, this known in the industry as clickbait.